Okay, and welcome to, what is this, Shelby, our third session of two 30-minute yoga uh, tapings. I'm Rebecca Wood, and since we're alone in the room, Shelby and I are more than 10 feet apart, and we can take our masks off. I'm going to just place it on the floor here. Probably not the most sanitary thing to do, but oh yeah, it's my yoga class. Anyway, we have airflow going, and it's a beautiful sunny day. We can be doing this outside, and we all keep enticing Shelby to come take one of our park yoga classes, and I hope she will. So why am I standing against the wall with a rolled up mat behind my knees? Because very many people have a difficult time in Tadasana, or mountain pose, which is one of the core of all poses for the preliminary to all standing poses. And it's often very difficult for people to open up the backs of their knees. Tight hamstrings, maybe overly tight uh, psoas, hip flexors here. So we're gonna work on opening the backs of our knees with a prop. You can use one of those foam rollers, so you can use a rolled up mat, a rolled up towel. You want to still create that good foundation, and we do have this odd chair rail here that's handy for some things, not particularly for this. <laughs> and it would, it's very awkward to try to have the back of your head, the shoulders, and the buttocks, and the backs of the knees, and the heels all lying here because we have a natural curve to our bodies, and we all have different sizes, hips, buttocks, shoulders, etc. But what we're trying to do is open the backs of the knees. So it activates the quadriceps, gently lifting the muscles up and a gentle roll out at the, the hip points. Uh, and this is gonna open our core. We're gonna then add the core muscles. We're gonna bring that transverse abdominis up, ribs down, just gently. Glutes are gently engaged. And feel the action of the four points of the foot and reaching back through the backs of the knees into the wall. That little feedback loop. Uh, there's a great book, Yoga on the Wall, by an old friend, Nancy McGowkin, and she is a co-author, I don't recall the name, but I really like that book. We're gonna also end with a wall pose, your Prina Karani legs up the wall, which is a pretty standard favorite for all people, so I hope you'll enjoy it, and it's a great way to take the stress out of the day, to reduce uh, the stress response, to uh, help with restless legs or uh, other lymphatic issues you might have in the legs. Uh, so it's just very calming to the nervous system and uh, very activating to the lymphatic system. So I'm reaching through my heels into the earth, grounding, trying to find the four points of the feet and it's a challenge, so under the big toe mounds, under the baby toes, inner heels and outer heels. And as you do this, you're probably gonna find your habit. Oh, I tend to walk a little knock knee. My knees are rolling in, and the outsides of my baby toes are up. Or I tend to roll out. And you look at the wear on the bottom of your shoes or some hints as to how you really use your feet to walk through your life. So we're going to work on that, feet parallel, and just again, practice this a few times. Standing for three to five minutes is a lot more work than you realize. I don't care for my hands rolled under. Once we do that, the shoulders hunch over, the clavicle drops, you crunch the core, all your internal organs become uh, pressurized and, and can atrophy or have all sorts of issues. So we'll open it up, keep the core on, Slide anatomical, kissing the scapulas gently together, your shoulder blades. Chin is slightly up and in, but it's a comfortable, strong pose. And that action of the knees and the lifting and rolling out of the quads helps in achieving Tadasana, not you can do your breath work here for the beginning of class as you consider all of these other things. So your mind is definitely clear. But your mind can observe, your mind can process these things and not judge as you keep 
coming back to, oh yeah, four points of the feet. Oh yeah, flower open the backs of the knees. Roll the hips gently open. Lift the quads gently. Core on. Maybe that secret smile on your face. You might try that uh, vagal nerve toning breath. Inhale to the count of four, five. Pause to the count of six or seven, retaining that breath. And exhaling to the count of eight or nine. powerful breath work. We're not going to do it for three to five minutes, but you would want to do it for three or five minutes and just see how it enhances your stress resiliency and calms or tones the vagal nerve. So I'm going to bend a knee and take out my prop. We are going to start with the chair. I'm going to move this into a more safe and sanitary place. I'll be right back. I'm going to move a chair around and we're going to look at how we can do some of these poses we did last week with the use of a chair on the ground and then on the wall. And uh, we might have to take a break and move the camera for a second here as we move around to the wall stretch uh, and I'll chuckle with Shelby in a minute here as to why. But we're going to use our chair as our feedback loop right now. And again, we always want our chair on a non-slip surface, our feet on a non-slip surface. And we're going to move back to where we can create a 90 degree. And Shelby, am I at 90 degrees here with my legs and torso? Looks like it. Looks like it. Thank you. And we don't want to hyperextend. I, I couldn't hyperextend if I tried. <laughs> But some people, if you notice, are locking their knees, or it looks like their knee is bending backwards. That is not what we're, our goal is. Soften those knees in that case. Firm up all the musculature along the muscle trains of the legs. Engage the cores. And have the arms extended long. If you were on the wall, you'd be pushing away from the wall. Lift the belly button towards the back. Two or three cycles of breath here. Keep adjusting so you feel symmetry. You can dangle one arm for a bigger stretch in the armpit opening in the opposite side. And that's more of a stretch than you think. And this is a tough area to open up. We're gonna roll up on our toes a few times. Stretch out those hamstrings. If it's very tight, soften the knees again. We're going to inhale and roll up. Step up and adjust as you need so that you're facing forward. Easier with a square back chair, but life isn't perfect, so modify. Create variations that safely work for you. A goal is to keep the back heel on the ground. Open the back knee, if you can, safely, and begin to bend the front knee. And it may look easy. Does it look easy, Shelby? It is not. <laughs> it's quite a stretch for the hamstrings, and you can come up and down a few times to practice and to play with opening that group of muscles ligaments, tendons, fascia, and keep dropping through the front knee, keeping the hips square as you can. We don't want the hip to roll out, and it's quite a nice stretch. When we do it on the wall, we'll place our hands up at shoulder height and really look up and drop the shoulders down the back. But here's a way to use a chair and then you reach back into wall stretch again. Find your position. Bring that belly button up and in so you're flattening the back. And you can do a few cat cows here. It feels very soothing. Again, being cautious not 
to hyperextend those knees. Ah. And then step forward, adjust with the opposite foot. Trying to keep those shoulder blades down the back, looking out into the vista or your dristy, your focal point. Quite a beautiful autumn day out there. Up and down a few times with the back foot. This can help stretch out the plantar fascia. And then begin to descend, it's not a big movement, through the front knee. You might find one side is tighter than the other. All just filed away for your awareness for what, how your body is on each and given day and how your body is in old habits. Ah, oh, big stretch. Don't hesitate to stretch out deeper if you want. But make sure you're using a safe chair to do this. And then we're going to step forward, step back. And we're going to rotate our chair. So you can do this from the back of the chair, or I will need to do it from the front of the chair, to a modified down dog. It could almost be a modified Utanasana standing forward bend, but it's more of a down dog action as you move your feet away. Let the head come through the arms. Belly button is up and in. Shoulder blades are still reaching down the back. And breathe. Nice, wonderful stretch. If it feels comfortable for you, you can move into a full Uttanasana. Trying to open the backs of the knees. If this is too much work, soften them. That's just fine. If you have blood pressure issues or heart issues that your doctor has asked you not to have the heart, the head lower than the heart, you can bring the arms up over the Knees, contemplation mudra, and still get quite a nice stretch, particularly through the lumbar sacral area. Hand, hand, core engaged, and up. So there's a modification of standing forward bend or down dog using the chair and wall stretch. Ah, we can also do a modification of side angle, which is one of the uh, standing poses we did, I believe, in one of the first two sessions. We'll review them all again as we go through these sessions. And we're hoping to have a guest teacher in here one day or two, and perhaps some other folks uh, following along with the class. You're going to bring the outside arm in to the chair. The forearm is going to rest. And again, depending on your height, you might have to adjust with blocks or a rolled up mat or a table. Uh, everybody doesn't have the same leg, torso, or arm length. So my forearm is down. My back leg is going to come up, and I'm using my upper hand on the top of the uh, chair as I roll up into half moon pose here. The, uh, Arch and And then I can soften the knee and come up. Soften the knee and come up. So the half moon rising is the hip rolling up. And down. Just enjoy a nice modified Uttanasana. And for side angle, stepping back, bending the front knee. Forearm can be resting on the chair. So we've done two standing poses here, modified or variations with the chair. Half moon, Ardrich and Drasana, and side angle. And the torso is rolling up. You're pushing through the front foot. 
You can have the hand nestled and resting on the hip, encouraging that hip down. As much energy through both feet, this front knee working backwards. If it feels comfortable to you, you can reach that top arm up. Depending on shoulder issues, you may or may not want to do that. You can stretch it out like the shaft of an arrow and float up. So two standing poses you can use a chair with for various um, variations. Good. We're going to move this out of our way. And then we're going to come down and practice. I'm going to shift the mat so it's sideways. Come down to the center of the mat. We have done a sitting pose called Dandasana in the past, staff pose. Pulling the flesh away from the sits bones. Extending those legs along, and here's a test to see if you happen to have tighter hamstrings. Can you engage the backs of the knees into the earth without the heels popping up? Many people cannot, and that's fine. So again, using a prop, and this may be too large for some people, and it may not be large enough for others. So a rolled up hand towel, rolled up washcloth, the, the yoga balls I like to use, tennis balls basically. So now I can push down to my knees, have a little more support, and activate those quads lifting up, which encourages me to be able to stand tall. Hand positions for Dandasana can be twofold. You can reach the fingertips by the hips and roll them down. Again, don't let the chin float up. It's up and in. Scapula was reaching down the back, kissing each other lightly. Or you can fold them the opposite direction. Both a little different action in the arms, or nice stretches in different ways, opening up this carpal tunnel area. When well, that was it just did. I have a wrist implant, so it's metal. It's not ever going to unfold all the way but it's still a lovely stretch that feels good. And I still want blood flowing and the fascia to be supple around whatever injury, scar, implant that I have. So sitting tall, staff pose, Nandasana. So another way to practice stacking the body in good posture. We're gonna do a little boat pose, Navarasana. And I speak Sanskrit about as well as I speak Latin. And I taught many botanical classes for many years. Uh, I just call it Appalachian Latin. So I'll call it Appalachian Sanskrit too. <laughs> but it's all fun to hear the words in another language and to what they might mean as far as understanding the asanas, the poses, and taking a pose with ease. So in any of these poses, you may have to modify or create a variation where your legs are a little longer in front, maybe feet flexed. You may get cramped, so just back off and see what you need to do. You can always just do one leg at a time, and that's a good way to practice. Create a little breath mantra, if you like, with one leg at a time. So you can inhale up and pause, up and pause, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale. The closer you can get it, the more work for the core. And yes, this is core work. You're gonna feel this. Trying not to slump here. So if you need to sit a little more forward, you'll, you just have to find your floating spot when you get into true boat pose. So feet are off the ground and perhaps just walk for it. Here at 90, one up, down, down. One up, down, down. You can do both up, down, down. Up, down. Up, whoop, down. Gotta keep that spot. 
You can do it with the hands up, feet together, point the toes. You can go through a variety of variations just to keep that core engaged and to learn to activate the lower part of the body. Nice to end with a gentle side stretch, a little twist. And give your body a few minutes to adjust. Your heart rate will be elevated. Boat pose does that. Sliding the outside of the hand along the outside of the leg. The opposite back arm is ballast wherever you need it for support. You're rolling the torso. And up. Come back to center. Opposite side. Lift always before you twist. Lift, twist. Notice if the inside leg has drawn up it's a natural thing for it to do try to encourage it to stay out it's harder lift and exhale and again it doesn't matter how far you go and if you need to slide the hand down the front or even the inside that's fine find your point Let your breath help ease the body into the pose. So quick review, boat pose. You can have all the limbs up. You can grab the toes and come up into a wide-legged boat pose. And keep that core drawing in and up. You can bend the knees. I find that even harder, actually might have to do with how the sits bones are designed even. Everybody's sits bones are different. And then come down into easy cross leg or sukhanasana. And many people might want a small mat or a blanket or lift under the sits bones to make sukhasana easier. To come out of your normal patterns, which will help balance the musculature and the fascia of the body. Shift the cross. It feels really strange. <laughs> Something so subtle may feel really different. If you need something to prop one side up so you can create as much equanimity as possible, please do. Core is on. We looked at contemplation mudra. This is a nice place to sit, to be, to breathe, to contemplate. But I'd like to introduce two other mudras. Detox mudra. You take the thumb into the inside of the index finger and gently press in. Press in. The hands gently float up the thighs so that the shoulders and elbows are in alignment, shoulders floating down the back, core in and up. And the hand mudras are asanas, basically, just hand mudras or hand asanas, help redirect the energy through the nadis, into the major meridians, into the shashoda. So it's a way of rebalancing, recalibrating, energy in the body. Anya and Pingali are the two largest mudras, I mean the two largest meridians that float down up and through Shishuna. The energy train that goes in front of the spine, up through the crown chakra, and down through the root chakra, through the perineal floor. So just another technique in practicing your breath work, practicing focus, noticing shifts in energy in your body. So we're down on the floor. We're going to uh, do a couple other 
uh, sitting poses just before we lie down into a, a Virprina Karani, a legs up the wall practice. And Shelby, I don't have my clock behind me. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. So how are we doing on time for this first 20, 30 minute segment? We're at 25 minutes. Okay, good. Um, honestly, I think I'll just go to Virprina Karani because we get so excited about different asanas and you want to try as many things that feel good for your body. But taking a few minutes to start and having your breath, and being aware of your breath, three to five minutes, and, and letting the body follow that, warming up, and then three to five, 10, 15 minutes. Do you ever allow yourself 15 minutes of just all time? It's pretty important. So we're gonna shift to your Prina Karani, legs up the wall for our Shavasana. And my fat doesn't matter how it is. This can actually be helpful if you wanted to go from legs up the wall to a couple modified or supported uh, bridge or shoulder stand poses. And we'll demonstrate that. I believe you'll be able to hear me. I've never spoken to the ceiling and see if it tracks well, so I don't know. The traditional pose, you have the blanket folded in quarters neatly with a nice easy fur, uh, fold. Uh, for your buttocks to be on, and a little gap here uh, for the tailbone to drift over. Some people don't like this blanket, some people want two blankets, some people want a bolster, some people like the floor. Find out what works best for you. How to get into your prena crani is always rather numerous in class. So just sit in the corner of the mat on one side, the, the folded blanket. The hip is close to the uh, wall as you can get, and just gently roll up. Now that may look simple, but it's very awkward for some folks. So the best remedy is to just chuckle and then ask for help if you need it. You can wiggle worm your way to get closer, and sometimes I have to physically come and assist so somebody can pull themselves close to the wall. Now, Shabby, I wish you could be doing this because this feels wonderful. And we'll also do a version of it on the chair. Because you can use your couch, you can use a low bed, a chair, a yoga ball, one of the large yoga balls. And this is quite relaxing. Again, calming the shin, the spirit, the nervous system. All the energy coming down, all the venous return, all the lymphatic return. You can do a little lymph brushing here if you want. Quite nice. Brushing down the body to where the lymph nodes dissipate, whichever way you're, whatever part of the body you're working with. Flex the feet. You can add a block or a ball in between the ankles if you want a little more action for the legs. You can just practice your breath. Very good for calming the body before you go to bed uh, and for uh, calming restless leg for many people. If you want a little extra workout here, you can bring the feet against the wall, uh, keep the knees in alignment with the ankles, support the torso with your hands, and push the wall away. Activating the core, pushing the wall away, and release. Change the position slightly, push the wall away, and release. Kind of a strain, counter strain technique. Here's where this uh, chair rail gets to be a bit of a problem. For some people, it'll be the perfect placement. For me, it's not quite, but you want to pull the feet down the wall. So you're lifting the torso up into a modified shoulder stand. Now I can walk my feet up. It's like I'm pulling the paint off the wall and lifting the buttocks up to the heavens. This is activating the quads, 
my chin is towards my throat, massaging and activating the thyroid, parathyroid glands, and then slowly roll down from the top vertebra, one vertebra at a time, and back into the prenatal colony. How do we get out of this? Bring the knees to the chest. Gently roll to whichever side you prefer. And come to seated. Namaste.